Hello, everybody, and welcome to Summer Shorts 4. I'm Sam Richardson with Flint Repertory Theatre, here with... I'm Dakota. I'm Addison. I'm Ileana. These students are here from our Summer Shorts cast, and they're here to introduce our final show and tell a little bit about their experiences. Our final show is The Golden Goose, which was so much fun, both for the actors and to assistant direct. This show is really fun. We had lots of props and lots of characters, and we worked on making big, bold choices. Also, this was a very great experience for inside activities, since we all right now can't go out the house, but this was a very fun experience. So with that, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Once upon a time, when I was young, and you were even younger, there lived a mother with three children. One morning, the mother sent her eldest child into the forest. I need you to go cut wood in the forest. I shall do it with ease, mother. Here, take a bottle of Pepsi and a Lunchable for your lunch. Is it the pizza one? Of course. Yes! Lunchables! Off into the forest, the eldest child went. Not long into the journey, he came across an old person. Could I trouble you for a little bit of your drink and some of your food? You want to drink my drink and eat my Lunchable? No way, it's the pizza one. The eldest child then came to a nice big tree in the forest to cut down. He went out three strokes of his axe into cutting down the tree when... as they could, leaving a trail of blood. At home, the mother attended to the wound. We still need wood for the fire. Go into the forest and cut some wood for us. Pick a juice box and a Happy Meal for energy. Yes, I love Happy Meals. Not long into the journey, he came across the same old person. Could I trouble you for a little bit of your drink and some of your food? You want to drink my drink and eat my Happy Meal? No way! Little child then came to a nice big tree in the forest to cut down. But not three strokes of his axe into cutting down the tree when My arm! My arm! There's an axe in my arm! The middle child ran home as fast as they could, leaving a trail of blood. Once home, the mother attended to the wound. We still need wood for the fire! Whatever shall we do? And just then, the youngest child spoke up. I can go get wood, mother! This made the rest of the family laugh. <laughs> no, really, I can. You can't even tie your shoelaces. It's confusing. I can never remember where the bunny goes after it crosses the tree. But I have Velcro. You burned cereal. The milk was too cold. You don't even know how to use an axe. Pointy and toward the tree. 
chop, chop, chop. I've been practicing using my stuffed animals and axe. Look, I can do it, I promise. All right, but all I have left for you to take is a half bottle of water and some burnt cocoa cups. That's all I need. So off into the forest, the youngest child went. Not long into the journey, he came across the same old person. Could I trouble you for a little bit of your drink and some of your food? All I have is a half a bottle of water and some burnt cocoa puffs. But you're welcome to share them with me if you want. So they both sat down by a tree and shared a meal together. At the end of the meal, the old person said, Because you have been so kind and shared your meal with me, let me return the kindness to you. Do you see that tree over there? <laughs> it down and as for Ruth will be something good for you. Ooh, is it a bike with two wheels? I just have to learn to ride without training wheels though. Why would there be a bike under my tree? Well, I just thought... Before the youngest child could respond, the old person was gone. Dun dun dun! To work I go. The youngest child then walked over to a nice big tree in the forest the old person had pointed to and started to cut down the tree. But not three strokes of their axe into cutting down the tree as a lumberjack walked by. It's going down! I'm yelling timber! You better move! You better... The root of the tree was... A goose made of golden feathers? A goose made of golden feathers? Uh. I call dibs. But I shed my lunch. I challenge you to a dance battle for the goose. Well, I guess that's fair. Then, the most intense dance battle to ever happen began. In this corner is a literal child versus a Okay, you won fair and square. Good luck with your golden goose. Honk. Youngest child picked up the goose and started heading home when... Honk, honk, honk. What's wrong, little buddy? Honk. Are you thirsty? Honk. Maybe you want a name? Like Hank, Harold, or Ryan Goosling? Honk. Okay, okay, okay. I'll just call you Goose. But you still want something, right? Honk. Are you hungry? Honk, honk, honk! Well, what do you feed a goose? I don't have any food with me right now. I guess I'll just go have to go into town and get some food for you. I'll put it on my family's side up program. So instead of heading home, the young child turned around and walked to town. While in town, everyone noticed this amazing goose with golden feathers. Honk. One of whom was a lady. Oh my, a goose with golden feathers? Honk. I must have one of its feathers for my own. 
So she snuck up behind the youngest child and tried to pluck the feather. But as she touched the feather, On my way. So Gertie put her arms around her, but then she too was. Oh no! What? I am stuck as well. Is this a prank? No! Never fear, I'm here! But as soon as their friend Bertie touched Gertie. Oh no! That's Stuck. 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 Youngest child paid no attention to what was happening behind him. They continued through town. They passed by the three ladies' father. What are you three doing? Stop chasing after that boy and go right home this instant. He stretched out his hand to pull Bertie away from the chain, but then he too became... I am stuck! Oh my word! Oh! The youngest carried on their way, not noticing the trail of people behind him. Are you okay, Goose? Ah! As he continued to town, the train of people came across two of the father's friends. Steve! Helga! Help! We are stuck to each other and cannot escape! I shall pull you off with my super strength! Huh! I seem to be stuck. Always in need of a woman's help to get the job done right. Just grab my hand. <clears throat> oh, brother. Stuck. And so they traveled throughout the day. At the edge of the town lived the king, whose daughter would not smile nor laugh. Oh, my dear. Oh, I wish to see you smile and laugh. <sighs> Did I tell you the one about the peanut butter? I better not. I, I might spread it. <laughs> what about the peanut butter? Oh, it was a joke? Not funny. What did the king have up both his sleeves? His armies, get it? <laughs> it's a military joke. Yes, I heard. Well, how about... Be be before the king could finish his amazing third joke, that was amazing, I mean, really, it was. His daughter saw the sight of the youngest child carrying the golden goose, followed by a train of humans trying to get his attention. My jokes were funny. <laughs> no, you silly goose. Look there at those people and the silly golden goose. <laughs> <laughs> My, that that is quite funny. I say, hello down there. Uh, young sir, what are you doing? Try to find some food for the goose, your majesty. Hawk. You have made my daughter smile and laugh, which I have never seen or heard before. How would you like to marry her? <laughs> I beg your pardon? They seem nice, and they have made you laugh. You know I am dating John. Anyway, who gives their daughter away to someone they haven't even met yet? Also, he's like 10 years old. Yeah, that seems quite a bad way to start a relationship, Your Majesty. And girls have cooties. Fine. How about I give you enough food to feed you 
your family, and your goose. Ah. Seems a little bit more appropriate. Agreed. Good. Your Majesty, might I ask a favor? Yes. What is it? That this young man releases us. Oh, I didn't even notice you there. Goosey, do you mind? Honkity, honkity, honk. And with that honk, they all became unstuck from each other. And everyone, including the youngest child, headed home. This food is so heavy, and I still have such a long walk home. But I would walk 500 miles, and I would walk 500 more, just to be the man who walks 1,000 miles, and to fall down at your door. I mean my family's door. Honk! Wait, can you help me, little guy? Honk. The youngest child hugged the goose to thank it. Just then, the golden goose opened his beak and let out the biggest, loudest, longest. Honk. And the honk was so big and loud and long that its power flew the goose and the youngest child all the way home. It's my youngest child. What is it that you have? It's probably just their stuffed animal. Or maybe his blankie. It's not either of those things. See, I found a golden goose and made a princess laugh, so now I get a lifetime supply of food. See? Oh my goodness! Just then. Honk. The goose laid a golden egg! We're gonna be rich. We could be even richer if we got all the eggs from the goose now. And the golden meat. Ah. No! You can't hurt the goose. It's my friend. I found it so it's mine. Just then, there was a knock at the door. Who's at the door? <laughs> Maybe it's somebody trying to find the golden egg. I put it on eBay. Hello? Hello, young one. You have shown you are kind and worthy of my gift of the golden goose. But your family isn't, so I will help you. How? Just trust me. With that, the old lady winked and disappeared. Dun, dun, dun! The young boy turned around, and his family had been turned into... with a knock at the door. Hello? Hello, young sir. I want you to come live with me and my daughter as part of our family. Since you have brought us so much joy, I want you to adopt us as your family. We have a lovely pond for you and your geese to live in at the castle. What do you say? What do you think, Goose? All right, we'll come live with you. Thank you, Your Majesty. Just call me Dad! And with that, the boy, his new family, and his geese lived happily ever after.